Hello everyone, thank you for coming and watching my video today. I'm Darlene and I'm here to do a reading on your deceased loved ones. Thank you for being here and if you like this kind of content I would be ever so grateful if you would hit that like button. It helps my channel to grow and I'm just getting started here on YouTube. But most importantly it helps uh, tell YouTube this content is interesting and it pushes it out to a broader audience which means this message is more likely to get to the families that it's meant for okay now that we've got my business out of the way whoa all right spirit hold on hold on uh let's see what all this is let me just put these out i have a gentleman coming through today this is interesting okay bear with me y'all let me get these cards out Um, and they're saying take that one, okay. And what else? It's on the bottom. Let's see here. Huh, okay, okay. <clears throat> so, before I get into the cards, let me uh, tell you what I have coming through, or who rather I have coming through. Um, <laughs> I like to watch Brit Box. I'm actually an American, but I like to watch Brit, Brit Box TV shows and. I don't know if there's something about their culture or whatever that I enjoy uh, and their intelligence and humor and language and all that good stuff. It, anyway, it's, it's something I enjoy. So, they're showing me um, some scenes from the countryside that some of those shows have been made in and some of the storylines are kind of, it's their way of giving me information because it's something that's in my head. That's kind of how most psychic mediums work. You, the more experience, the more things you've been exposed to, the more things they can give you in terms of images that to get their message through. Hope that makes sense. So this gentleman worked around horses and at first I thought, well, maybe he just ha had a horse farm or whatever. And then they said, no, that's not it. And so they started giving me images of a situation where he was like a groomer, but more than that. And I don't know enough about those terms. I haven't been around that world, so I don't really know. There, there must be a term for it. But he was like the, the head guy at the stables, whatever that was. But they're showing me, and I'm chuckling because they're showing me a scene like in Downton Abbey, and I'm sure the world knows what <laughs> Downton Abbey was, where, you know, the, the lord of the manor comes out and he's going for horseback ride, and, and this man comes and gives him the horse, and the horse is groomed and taken care of and saddled and ready to go, right? And then when he comes back, he hands the, 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 the tired, sweaty horse back to this man. But, but he had the honor of being the head person who took care of the horses and that kind of thing. I hope, <laughs> I hope you can picture that in your head. So the reality is this might not necessarily have been something that grand, but they're just giving me this so that I can give you this sense of kind of what this man did, all right? Hope that makes sense. Um, and I believe he was held in very high regard for his abilities and his skills and he, he just really loved horses and being around and working with horses and he's saying yes they were just such an intelligent animals and he's making a joke he's, and he might have said this to family members yeah they're more intelligent than humans that's what he's saying to me <laughs> and he, he's also saying yeah and they were a good gauge of character because it, um, they could tell about humans and who's, who's a good and honest person and who's not. And they just had a sense about that. It's what he's saying to me. I don't know that, but, uh, but that's what he's saying to me. Um, now, the story um, that I've been given, so that's, that's who's coming through. And then this message that is um, wanting to connect with a young woman, I believe, was his daughter. And I'm not sure how, but you know, if, if he's hypothetically in one country, she's like hypothetically, let's say he's in England, and she apparently wanted to go to school or something, and came to the United States or some other. It's like like they're on different continents or some separation because I think she wanted it was when she went off to school is what I'm hearing. 
uh, could have been a job situation too, but but uh, but it's that kind of situation. It wasn't they were not estranged or anything, but she just needed to go and was growing up and pursue her interest um, or education. Well, you know he he's um, also making the point. He was kind of the strong, silent type. He was not a a gregarious kind of person. But he did, he is showing me also, but he did have hobbies. Again, I watched a lot of Brit Box. And so I'm giving, they're giving me the quintessential pub scene where what he would do for fun, you know, he was, um, he would occasionally go to the pub and he showed me sitting around a table playing a board game. I can't tell if this is chess or checkers or something like that, but he would do that with his friends occasionally and, and then go home. He was just kind of a quiet type. He didn't, you know, party or socialize all that much. That was the kind of the extent of his partying was sitting around playing a board game with his friends, maybe. But he's saying he did have a secret that I think he said not many people or maybe any people knew about, which was he liked to paint. And he say dabbling. I dabbled. I just, I was a dabbler. I dabbled in it. And uh, it, it was of something that he really enjoyed. He said, yeah, I know I wasn't very good at it, but that wasn't the point. He said it was like a meditation to him. And by the way, I'm an artist, so I get that totally. It's like an athlete goes into the zone. Well, artists go into the zone and you just, the whole world kind of disappears. And so he's, he's saying that was what it felt like for him. It was his mental and emotional escape. It was his calm and peaceful time and he um, treasured it. So back to this young woman, she went out into the world of, you know, seek her fortune and grow up and live her life. Um, and she's just so beautiful. He, he just loved her, he, beautiful young woman. Um, and she lived life and had some heartaches. And let me see here, one second here, let me. Yeah, he, he's saying, that, and I think she would call home and talk to him and share, you know, romances that had, you know, lifted her heart and then it dashed her heart. And, you know, as we go through life, all that happens. We fall in love and then, you know, the bubble bursts and whatever. And she, you, whoever this is meant for, the young woman is who I'm speaking to now, you um, would share that. And he was always... Again, kind of the quiet type, but I, I get the feeling that you, he never judged you. Uh, all he wanted was your happiness and your success to see you victorious in whatever it was that you chose, whatever path you chose to walk. He actually said, though, at one point, I think he had a conversation with you about maybe being strong and it, I'm trying to put this into words. It's like you were bemoaning these relationships that hadn't worked out, or I feel like there's more than one, maybe two. And he was saying, well, you should be proud to be single. Why are you bemoaning that? You're smart, you're single, you're, you're taking care of yourself, but you probably have a good job, all those things. And he said, you should be proud of yourself. Why are you looking back bemoaning that? He said, you, you know, you're the catch. You're the catch here. Um, you've got a good future. You're beautiful. You have a, you know, s smart mind, all those things. And, and it was kind of an aha moment for you. I feel like you didn't, you never thought of it that way. Perhaps you thought the light was, and I don't get this is necessarily something that you will being browbeat with as a child in terms of tradition. You grow up, you get married, you have a family, blah, blah, blah. I don't get that sense. I just get the sense that maybe it was just kind of something that's just what you thought would happen. And, uh, and so this conversation apparently was a bit pivotal, <clears throat> excuse me, for you. And uh, it was an aha moment where you said, well, you know, that's right. I should be proud and happy in my, in my singledom over here and loving that I can provide for myself and I, I can find happiness. We all know happiness is a state of mind and it is a choice. And 
And I think you just kind of fell in love with yourself at that point. I think you realize, well, I'm just going to sit over here and do me. I'm going to I'm going to be in love with me for a while. I'm forget this romance and men, and I'm going to focus on my career, and I'm just going to be happy with me. And I think that's where you are now. And he's saying there is somebody coming. He wants you to know that there is someone coming that's going to be perfect for you. That it was you'll look back and say it was worth waiting for and all these people were just uh, stepping stones to getting you where you needed to be later teaching you how to be strong but you had to love yourself first you had to love yourself first before all of this could happen and i know that's kind of a trite message but but that's the point he wants to make here is that your happiness will come but it comes first the epiphany is but it comes first by loving yourself by embracing being single and independent, uh, you start to love yourself more. And then, and we all struggle with that, but it's just kind of the human condition, I think, having to learn to love ourselves. It's such a, the human condition is so outward focused, typically. We have to find our way inside to strengthen ourselves and love ourselves first. And that's something not everyone achieves. Um, so, you know, you're moving on. This is someone moving on to calmer waters. She's looking very, and this is just harkening back to what he was saying. You were looking sad and she's looking down like she's just sad and bemoaning what's behind her and all that. Um, but so she, she's kind of in, in her head here. This is, um, kind of a, uh, self inflicted mental anguish, I guess you could say. It's not really anguish, that's too strong of a word, but mental imprisonment, as it were, where you just, poor me, woe is me, you know, woulda, shoulda, coulda kind of thinking. And and that's what he's saying you were doing here. And now that you've been able to put that down and start realizing you need to focus on you and love yourself first, you're going to find balance in your life. Very, very simple. You will find balance in your life. And I get the sense you're already there. You're getting or very close. I think you're starting to feel a sense of, what's the word? Certainly peace, but, and, and acceptance, but it's more than that. It's more like embr embracing it. You, I think you're really starting to enjoy it and embrace it. Like, hey, I kind of like my freedom. Hey, I kind of like... You know, I, I can go to bed when I want to and get up when I want to and I can eat when I want to and I don't have to take care of anybody else or pick anybody else's underwear up off the floor and, and you know, that kind of thing. I think you're, you're now starting to, you've reached a pivot point where you're looking and looking at the more positive things about being single and, um, and that you, you are independent and can take care of yourself as opposed to looking back and reflecting back on all of this. And I just want to peek. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're listening to your intuition more. You're, you're starting to finally, again, you've gotten this epiphany about loving yourself. And now you're, um, you're connecting with your intuition. You're letting it guide you more, which was something that many people, and I've been guilty of this, struggle. When we're in love, we tend to give ourselves so completely sometimes that we disconnect from our own guidance. We just can't hear it. We're all about outward, uh, con that outward connection, then we're, we kind of lose the inward connection. And so that's what's happening here is you're reconnecting to your intuition. Look, and the Queen of Pentacles. So she's the minor, well, no, the, the not, well, it doesn't matter. Um, she's independent, strong. Look how content she looks. This is where you're headed. You are miscontent. I don't need anything. I got everything I need. I got the, my money's good. I'm con I got, you know, everything I need around me. I don't need, need, operative word being need, uh, anything. I can take care of myself. I'm independent. And I really think, yeah, and that was the tower. The tower moment to me is just a, a quick change. I think, again, we're going, hearkening back to this Ace of Swords here where it was an epiphany. You, you just, it just blew you out of the water that, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I, I don't need to, I didn't miss out on anything here. Um, 
if anything, maybe spirit was protecting me. You know, that rejection is protection thing. So, uh, and you made a choice. Yeah, you've made a choice. You're moving forward. You're taking action. And uh, you're, and, and he's, or spirit rather, is saying, yeah, and because of this focusing on yourself and, and, um, and loving yourself, guess what you're going to attract to you now? You are going to attract love now because two of cups, that's bringing in a partner. And here he comes, not a source. Somebody's going to be coming in soon. So you're going to have to get out. <laughs> You, you, you're going to have a new perspective, though. This is, um, yep, an ace of wands. Yep, somebody's coming. So, uh, look at that, an ace of pentacles. Somebody's coming in to bring you an offer soon, so get ready. They are not far away, and, and it's because you've shifted your energy, you know, law of attraction. If you're focusing on what you don't have, you're going to get more of what you don't have. If you change your focus... Pivot, change your focus, focus on what you do have that you love. I mean, every day, get up, start your day with, gosh, I'm so glad I have clean air to breathe and I have this comfortable bed to lie in and I have a wonderful cozy roof over my head and I have toothpaste to brush my teeth with and I have food in my refrigerator and I have a car to drive to get me where I need to go and just everything you can find to focus on and give thanks for raises your vibration. So, that's what I feel like you started to do. You really started to be thankful and grateful for what you have and look forward to what's in front of you as opposed to back here behind you and regretting. And now that's just shifted all of your energy. That's caused a good tower moment and shifted your energy. And now you're starting to, uh, you've got balance here. And like I said, you're, you're listening to your intuition. You're going to be attracting something and someone very soon. Okay, well, that's all I have for you. I think this uh, this has been a nice, positive reading. I like these. And he's just saying hello. He's proud. He's, he's saying, um, yes, he's very proud. He's very proud of you. And I kind of get the feeling that the mother, your mother, uh, was not so much in the... She might have died young. I don't know. I'm not seeing her. I'm just saying I don't get a strong sense of a mother message here for you. Or she, I guess, could still be alive, too. I don't know. It just... He's just coming through like he was your, the main person in your life. Uh, so perhaps you lived with him and the mom. I don't know what happened there. I don't know. But he's just wanting to acknowledge you and that he sees what you've been going through and acknowledge that you've reached this, this pivotal point where you're going to really start um, experiencing more success and potentially love in your life. And he sees, you know, that's, that's why they come through is to say, hey, I'm watching. I'm not, I'm not in the physical anymore, but I see what's going on in your life. I do check in on you. And that's their way of, of letting you know that they're still around and they see and acknowledge what you're doing is by coming through with these little stories. So, okay, I hope this finds its way to um, the young woman it's meant for. And again, if you guys like this kind of content, please hit the like button and subscribe. It means a lot to me, as I said. And I will see you all again soon. Thank you for watching. Take care. Many blessings. Bye.